Family Theatre presents Eddie Fisher and Marilyn Erskine. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Welcome Home, starring Marilyn Erskine. And now, here is your host, Eddie Fisher. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Welcome Home, starring Marilyn Erskine as June. better hurry up. Oh, what time is it? Almost 10 o'clock. And the church is full of people. You ought to see the people. I didn't know we knew so many. Almost full? Your cheering section's got a few empty seats. My cheering section? Well, they've got all your friends on one side <laughs> and all ours on the other. Well, I suppose it is a little like a cheering section then, isn't it? Oh, Amy, where's my slip? Do you see it anywhere? Huh? Oh, here it is. <laughs> Thanks. It's supposed to be good luck to be the first one to congratulate the bride, isn't it? Is it? Jane! Oh, just a minute. Amy, hand me that rope. Here, I'll hold it for you. Uh, come in. Well, about ready? Just about. Oh, you look radiant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're going to get any prettier, I sure won't want to give you away. What do you mean, Pop? Well, I mean, I want to keep her myself, Cookie. I don't see why you'd want to yeah, do... No, not really, Cookie. Just, <laughs> your old dad was just trying to be clever. <laughs> well, I think you're real sweet. And I want to thank you for all you've done. Well, I really... Oh, no. It's nothing your own family wouldn't do if they were alive. And besides, we'll be your family in a little bit anyways. Thanks. <laughs> well, now, you've only got a few minutes, so maybe we better clear out let you finish dressing, huh? Wait, I want to congratulate her first and get the good luck. Well, not married yet, Amy. You want to try again in about a uh, half hour? You don't congratulate a bride anyway, Cookie. You wish her, uh, quote, all the luck in the world, unquote. But maybe congratulations are in order this time, Amy. Oh, come on, Cookie. I won't let a soul say anything after the ceremony till you've had a chance, Amy, all right? Swell. But you're not supposed to congratulate. Oh, let's see, is my makeup all right? Oh, I could straighten it up just a little. Maybe congratulations are in order. You're certainly not much of a beauty, Jane. But there's not much can be done about it. Hmm, I wonder if I should use just a touch of mascara. It should be safe enough. Then it wasn't safe that night in Berkeley, the night Joe proposed. Great picture, wasn't it? Mm. I'd like to have seen it on Broadway. Hey, that's right. Call Me Madam was a stage show first, wasn't it? I think Ethel Merman was in the original cast, too. Uh-huh. You know, Hollywood should make more pictures like that. They leave you with a warm, friendly feeling. Wouldn't it be nice if the world was really the way it is in the movies? In glorious Technicolor. <laughs> hey, you know, Donald O'Connor really surprised me. Surprised you? Yeah, when he sang that duet with Merman. He sounded pretty good. In the way he danced. Who couldn't with the princess for inspiration? What do you mean? Vera Ellen. Did you ever see such grace in a human being? Graceful, all right. I suppose that's what they mean by, by uh, typecasting. Oh, she looks so much like a princess. Hey, what did you think of that cartoon? <laughs> that Mr. Magoo. <laughs> he had me laughing almost like a fool. She belonged in the part. The beautiful princess in the white taffeta gown. Hey, here's the malt shop. You want to stop in here for a bite to eat, honey? Uh, no, no, not just yet. Let's go on a little, Joe. Wait a minute. Here, let me look at you. No, 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 please. Oh, here. Hey, let's sit down on this bench. Now, what do 
What is all this, honey? Why the tears? <laughs> so silly. Jane, have you got any faith in my judgment? Yes, you know I have. Then you let me decide if it's silly or not, okay? Now, now what's the trouble? I never cry, Joe, really, I don't. Is it something I said? Oh, no, no. It... I suppose it's been building up for a long time. What has? Oh, I look at her and I look at myself. It's just a kind of stupid self-pity, I suppose. Mm-hmm. I guess just about every girl likes, likes to picture herself as, as a beautiful princess. When I was a little girl at St. Anne's home... The orphanage? Mm -hmm. We used to talk together about things like that. I used to lie on my bed in the evenings and dream. Maybe a mistake had been made and that I was really a princess and that maybe the very next day my parents would come and that not only they but perhaps a whole kingdom would rejoice over finding me. And then, when I got older, I compromised the dream. I prayed just any couple would come along and pick me out, want me to belong to them. <laughs> it's a sad story, isn't it? Very mellow. You finish it. Well, I was all arms and legs and freckles. So they came, and they looked, and they went away again. But you never really throw a dream away, Joe. You keep a little of the first ones way down deep inside. Things like, well, like the picture just brings them to the top again. It makes them seem so, <laughs> so ridiculous. She was so graceful, so beautiful. Look at me. I am looking at you. How can I stretch my imagination far enough to keep that dream anymore? I think you're beautiful, honey. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. I suppose all this sounds pretty foolish to you. You guess right. Hey, look, don't look question marks at me. You see, I can't see why you'd feel anything close to self-pity. I've been thinking you're just about right. Oh, Joe. I thought you said you had faith in my judgment. But don't... It's getting pretty late, Jane. I've got an errand to run, so let's find the car and I'll drop you home, all right? All right. And there's something you ought to know, Jane. People don't see you the way you see yourself. Now hold on to your dreams for a little while, honey. See what happens. Do you want me to get it? I'll get it. That's what they pay me for. Not likely for you anyway. What fool be ringing a doorbell at three in the morning? Oh, I can't imagine. Hold your horses. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hi, doll. Now, don't you hi doll me. It's three o'clock in the morning. Hey, Jane here. Now, Joe Walsh, you know very well she's here, and you know I can't let you in at this time of night. It's strictly against house rules. No guests after 11. Joe? Hi, honey. So suppose you just go away and come back tomorrow like a good boy. Now, this is pretty important. I'm coming down. Now, Jane. Joe, is anything wrong? Everything's fine. Well, I suppose I can let you step into the hallway. I'll close the door. Now, this better be important. And hey, Mrs. Matheson, why don't you be a pal and beat it? What? Five minutes. That's all I ask. Joe, I don't understand all this. How about it, Mrs. M.? But what if my other boarders would hear... If I see anyone, I'll explain the whole thing. Well, all right. But I wish somebody would explain it to me. Five minutes! Right. Now, what is all this? Haven't you been to bed yet? Bed? <laughs> I've been downtown, I've been to Oakland, San Francisco, and then all the way to Fairfax to find a jewelry store that would open up for me. A jewelry store? Jane, I wanted to buy this for you. Oh, Joe. Well, there's... <laughs> There's a stone in the center there some way. <laughs> Might be a little hard to find. Oh, no, it's a beautiful stone. It's... It's got a string attached, Jane. If 
If you take the ring, you have to take me, too. Joe. Joe, I'd like to be your wife. But... But if you... Well, I mean, if what I said this evening after the show... No, honey. No, I, I thought about this before tonight. I've been thinking about this for a long time. Joe? Buying the ring, sure, that was an impulse. But the rest... Well, marriage is for a lifetime. I wouldn't decide on something like that on the spur of the moment. Will you wear the ring, Jane? Will I wear it? Oh, if you're sure, Joe. If you really want me to, of course I'll wear it. My goodness, are you just putting your makeup on? You don't want to be late for your own wedding. I was wondering, do you think I might use a little mascara? Oh, I wouldn't. After all, the men get to kiss the bride and they'll all be crying. <laughs> Wouldn't want it to run. <laughs> Here, put this over your head so you won't smear your makeup. We've got to get you into your gown. All right. Uh, here we go. Are you in the sleeves all right? Yes, yes, I, I think so. <laughs> yes, that's fine. Oh, you're as beautiful as a spring morning. <laughs> you always say the right thing. Not always. No, not always. No, you don't always say the right thing. That first day we met, you didn't say the right thing. Oh, Joe, I'm so nervous. Nervous? I suppose they don't like you. <laughs> it's not funny. Well, they're bound to like you. Are you suggesting my family has poor judgment? It's just so terribly important. Now, honey, don't worry about a thing. But I know what you mean. You know something? What? For the past 50 miles, I've been sitting here worrying about you liking them. You know, they're pretty nice people. What are they like, Joe? What are they like? Mm -hmm. Oh, just about any family, I guess. Mom can't get used to the idea of me wearing long pants. You know, Pop, he's a pretty regular guy, but don't start him talking about insurance or he'll wind up selling you a policy. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I can't afford it. And Amelia? My little sister Amy? Ordinary garden variety little girl. We fight like cats and dogs. Yeah, this is the street. Oh, it's a nice street. Lots of trees. And there's the house. Oh. Hey, don't look so distressed. Believe me, they're only people. No clubs, no whips, and only one of them has fangs. Joe! There's the one with the fangs now. Hi, sis! <laughs> you took so long to get here. I thought you weren't coming. What took you so long? We've been waiting all day. <laughs> hey, hey, let go of the stranglehold. Yeah, I want you to meet someone. Jane, may I present my sister, Amelia? I'm pleased to meet you, Amy. How do you do? Gee, Joe, I like her. <laughs> well, thank you. And my little sister's the one with the fangs. Joe! There's Mom. Hi, kiddo! Come on, honey. I'll help you with your bag, all right? Well, you carry the little one. It's got my family jewels in it. Jewels? Here, let me look at you. See? Same fella. And this is Jane. How do you do, Mrs. Walsh? Charming girl, Joe. You're not at all like I pictured you. Well, let's not stand here on the porch. Come on inside. You're probably both a little tired after your trip. Hey, where's Dad? Out back somewhere, I think. Why don't you go and get him? Okay. Only be a minute, honey. We'll take care of things here. Oh, I'm sorry. The house is such a mess. Mess? The way we worked around here? You think Joe is bringing home the Queen of England. Amy. Oh, you shouldn't have gone to any trouble, Mrs. Walsh. Oh, nonsense. No trouble at all. Amy, why don't you run out and put Jane's things in her room? Okay. Jane, can I take a look at your family jewels? You certainly may. Family jewels? Oh, it's just costume jewelry. Well, my dear, you were certainly a surprise to us. Of course, a very pleasant one. It was a surprise to me, too, Mrs. Walsh. Oh, that boy of mine. He's gone with so many pretty girls, you know. Been pretty close to getting married a couple of times. It's hard to believe Joe's at last thinking about settling down. I can hardly believe it myself sometimes. Mm. Joe wrote you were raised in a... Uh, what was it? A, a home for girls? An uh, orphanage. That's right, Mrs. Walsh. I lived there till I finished high school. Then I moved to Berkeley and started working for my teaching credential. Well, that's right. You were teaching, weren't you? Mm -hmm. First year math in the same school where Joe taught history. I wonder what could be keeping him. Well, come on upstairs. I'll show you your room. You certainly have a beautiful house here, Mrs. Walsh. Well, it's quite old, but we like it. Although, sometimes I think I could do with a few less stairs. Well, 
here, this will be your room. Amy. Hi, Mom. Now you put Jane's jewelry back in the box. I don't mind, Mrs. Walsh. Really, I don't. These are certainly lovely bracelets. Are they real diamonds? I'm afraid not, Amy. I don't suppose you'd have one that was a little too small for you. Why, Amy, you have things of your own. After all, Jane's almost... I mean, we hardly know her yet. We're almost sisters, aren't we? Well, perhaps, but not for a while. Well, I think I do remember one that was a little too small. Suppose you come up later, Amy, and we'll take a look, huh? Okay. Now, you run along now. Jane probably wants to shower before dinner. You won't forget? I won't forget. See you at dinner. All right, Amy. I believe you have everything you need here. It's a lovely room, thank you. Jane, you and Joe are certain about this. Have... have you set a date yet? We haven't set a date yet, no, Mrs. Walsh. But I think we're certain we want to get married, if that's what you mean. It's a lovely bracelet, Jane. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Do you think I should wear it on my left wrist or my right? I don't know. It's a little too loose on either one of them, isn't it? Not very much. Or well, maybe we could get Joe to bend it for you. He's down in the kitchen with Mother. It wouldn't hurt it to bend it, would it? No, I don't think so. Come on, let's ask Joe. Did you ever have any sisters, Jane? Well, I expect to have one soon. You mean me? All right. I think it's fine. Jane, your parents. Joe said they were killed. I don't even remember them, Amy. It was a long time ago. Then you don't really have anybody except us. Do you? I bet you were lonely. I was till I met Joe. Maybe I don't understand you. Better go through that one again. Well, I mean, she's so unlike any of the other girls you used to date. Sounds like they're talking about you. You mean like about Rose me? Johnson, Let's Johnson. listen. Emily that Moster. wouldn't be nice, Amy. It's she's not shun. Listen. I've met. I think she's different from anyone I'm likely to meet in the future. Now, what's the matter? Don't you like Jane, Mom? Well, it's, it's not that exactly, Joe. It's... No family, strange background. Maybe you think she's not quite good enough for your little boy, huh? But it doesn't bother me. I don't want to marry your family anyway. Amy, I don't think that... Shh, you miss something. And what was it you said earlier? She's such a plain little thing. Was that it? Well, now, son, I didn't mean... I'll tell you something. I've known quite a few girls, and I'm fed up to hear with the ones who have all their beauty on the outside. Remember Rose Johnson? Magazine cover. Pretty outside, nothing inside. She never had a thought. Never in her whole life. And Natalie, beautiful, loads of family background. It didn't mean a thing. She thought the world revolved around her head. Don't get so high and mighty with me. I remember when you were 18. You wouldn't even go out with anyone unless she was a Powers model. A Amy, you can't go now. Just one more minute. Oh, can't I change? Look, a long time ago, I thought the animated clothes racks, those tall zombies who graced the pages of the popular magazines, were representative of American womanhood. It took me a while to learn I was wrong, but I did learn. Physical beauty isn't worth a cent if there's nothing else to go with it. Jane's not plain, Mother. Well, I shouldn't have said plain. She's got, well, a holistic kind of beauty. It, it comes out in a thousand different ways. Every time I see her, I see something else I like. Now, you might not understand that, but I do want you to understand this. Although I want you to like her and help her feel she belongs in this family. Whether you like her or not, Jane's the girl I picked. And if anyone tries to make me take sides, I'll always be with her. Well, I don't want you to take sides, Joe. It's... it... she just doesn't seem to me to be your type, that's all. What made you change, Mrs. Walsh? Did you just get used to me? Was it something Joe said or did? Maybe it was the night we were addressing invitations. Maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. That seems like an awful lot of invitations to me. Yeah, I'm not sure we have that many friends. Well, I'm not at all sure we ordered enough. Do you have the list, Mrs. Walsh? Right here. Suppose we each take a page. Fair enough. Now, bride-to-be, which do you prefer? Copper plate or will my own blackboard variety Palmer method do? Uh, uh, pardon me? <laughs> Something on your mind, honey? I was just looking at all this. This is a big project, you know. Addressing a couple of hundred invitations? And everything else that goes with it. What do you mean, Jane? Yeah, I'd like to know, too. I, I mean, it's still not too late, Joe, if you're not sure. What do you mean, honey? I mean, I want you to be very sure. 
I don't want you to continue things just because you think, well, because you think maybe you've come too far to turn back. You want out, honey? Oh, no. Well, that makes two of us. Now, let's get started, okay? All right, Joe. Hey, where's the ink? Well, I think Amy has it. She's doing her homework in her room. Okay, be back in a minute. Jane. Yes, Mrs. Walsh? Why did you say that? About backing out, I mean. Don't you want to marry my son? More than almost anything. Well, then. But I, I don't want him to do anything out of a sense of duty. He couldn't be happy doing something as big as this on those terms. And you want him to be happy, even if it makes you unhappy? That's quite a noble gesture. Maybe that's not the reason at all. Maybe I just can't believe it's me he wants, or understand why or what he sees in me. Oh, I think I'm beginning to understand what he sees in you, Jane. <laughs> I think we're about ready for the wedding. Do I look all right? Oh. Come on, everything's about ready. Hurry, I'll start without you. We're coming, just a few seconds. Well, you better snap it up. Well, I, I had something I wanted to say, but I suppose it'll just have to wait. What is it, Mrs. Walsh? Well, uh, let's just close the door for a second. Well, what I wanted to say, Jane, uh, I didn't like you at first. There was a kind of uh, unreasonable resentment, I guess. Oh, I suppose it stems from a mother's unwillingness to admit her children are no longer children. For some reason or other, we seem to consider our offspring incapable of making wise decisions. What I mean, Jane, is that now... Now I'm very glad you're going to be in our family. It, it seems like an awful lot of words just to say, welcome home, doesn't it, Jane? Mrs. Walsh... Now, girls, please, We're after coming. All. Well, all right. Oh, now, now, which side is it I stand on again? I think it's over here. Oh, over here? That's oh. right. Amy, right back there and keep a distance. Don't try to catch up like you did in rehearsals. I won't, Mother. Oh, my knees are shaking. Well, you just hold on to me. It, well, Mother, give the organist the signal. All right. <laughs> it looks like an awfully long way to that altar. Oh, God, help me make it all the way down there. Amen. My knees are shaking, too. <laughs> oh, did I laugh out loud? Oh, I didn't laugh out loud. Did I? No. No, I guess I didn't, or all these people would look scandalized. As it is, they look like normal wedding guests, each probably harboring a secret hope the bride will fall flat on her face. Oh, we'll fool them. Walk slowly, very composed, very dignified. What was it Mrs. Wall said? Think of yourself as Elizabeth at a coronation. I wonder if Elizabeth felt like running. Only a few steps now. Oh, there's Joe. I wonder if he's as frightened as I am. Just three more steps. My dear friends, you are about to enter upon a union of which God himself is the author, and which our divine Savior has consecrated in a special manner, giving to it a character of sanctity which places it among the holiest institutions of religion. Institutions. Well, what was the prayer I said when I was a little girl at the home? That someone would come along and pick me. Want me to belong to them. Jane's the girl I picked. And if anyone tries to make me take sides, I'll always be with her. This is the answer to that prayer. God's giving me to someone, someone I love very much, in the strongest union he ever established. A union of sentiment founded in virtue and the love of God. A union not only for time, but for all eternity. Joseph, wilt thou take Jane Cecilia here present for thy lawful wife? I will. Jane Cecilia, wilt thou take Joseph here present for thy lawful husband? I will. Not only for time, but for eternity. 
Joseph, take her right hand in yours. Now repeat after me. I, Joseph, take thee, Jane Cecilia, to be my lawful wife. I, Joseph, take thee, Jane Cecilia, to be my lawful wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. This is Eddie Fisher again. In my work, I've traveled all over the United States, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Cleveland, and during that time, I've come into contact with literally thousands of teenagers. And I think I can safely say that one quality of teenagers that I find unanimous throughout the country is the gang spirit. Now, this gang spirit is a funny thing, for if it's channeled in the wrong direction, it can become the cause of juvenile delinquency such as the much-publicized gang fights. But on the other hand, this same gang spirit can be a source for good, for it's this quality of joining together as a group that puts out a weekly high school paper, for instance, or makes a June prom such a success, or brings about a youth for religion movement. I think the teenagers really have something there, and I believe that the rest of the world could learn a great lesson from them, for it's this spirit of joining together that can, to my way of thinking, bring about world peace. And if we as nations could gang up on God, so to speak, by joining together in daily family prayer, I'm sure that world peace would be inevitable. Just as family theater always reminds you, the family that prays together stays together. So too a world at prayer will be a world at peace. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Welcome Home, starring Marilyn Erskine. Eddie Fisher was your host. Others in our cast were Irene Tedrow, Holland, and Kathy Johnson. The script was written by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present... Early Bird, starring Danny Thomas and Francis, will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? And now stay tuned for the latest news reported by Charles Arlington, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.